Hi, what a great group. It feels like a wonderful reunion. <laughs> Here's to all of you. So I just wanted to start by saying a few words of welcome. I'm Susan Hibbard with the BUILD Initiative, and um, Joan Lombardi gave us the idea for this meeting, sort of more like a mandate, and <laughs> in the nicest possible way. Um, and we're really, we're really excited about it. I wanted to spend just a few minutes um, introducing you to yourselves, um, telling you a little bit about who you are and what you said in the survey. Not in as much detail as we asked of you, but we did use all of that information so that resource people in the sessions tomorrow have received copies of the surveys of the states that they're working with, the state teams, so that they know something about how you view your state and how you view your role and what you've, what you've done and what you hope to do. So today we have leaders from 32 states here, pretty amazing. I was sort of guessing 12 on this short notice. Joan was guessing 50, so. <laughs> It says something about our personalities, I think. Um, the teams are really how we envision them by and large. There are state systems leaders, Head Start collaboration directors. There are people from early Head Start and people from child care. There are community level leaders and leaders who focus more at the state level. They're QRIS administrators, and we have funders here as well, both funders who are supporting the national work and funders who are, like United Ways, um, deeply invested in the local community work. So this is the group that we thought all needed to come together to think about this opportunity and how we can make the most of it. I guess it's good to switch slides if you're going to use them. Um, and. We felt like this is who needs to be together and all of the resource people, uh, too, who just to wrap our brains around this opportunity and figure out how we can make the most of it. That's Olivia in the snow trying to have an impact. <laughs> and that's my son, Miles, uh, when he was in the birth to three range. And you could see he's working hard to have an impact. In addition to the members of the state teams, we have more than three dozen resource people here. Some of them are state leaders who just, if you look around and think, who do we need who's really thinking about professional development systems? Or who do we need that's really thinking about, you know, Part C? Really, the work is happening at the state level. So much of the expertise is at the state level. So the distinction between resource people and state team members is really, um, just roles for the meeting. We're all here to learn and to help each other take the next right step. So the resource people for this meeting are state leaders, many independent consultants, and then leaders from national organizations. And it really, sort of like the early learning challenge, was short notice, and we're all going to have to work very quickly, especially when the FOA does come out. And groups have jumped to this. So I just want to particularly thank the Alliance for Early Success, build the whole team, uh, who I'll mention some of them to you in a moment, um, Child Care Aware, CLASP, NAEYC, the National Head Start Association, the Ounce of Prevention Fund, and Zero to Three. And there are just many, many groups who all said, you know, I think we need to do this. How can we do that? I feel that there's a working together in the field that is much stronger, I think, since the Early Learning Challenge and a number of other activities, and that we're all trying to figure out what we can do to help you advance the work. About the BUILD team, I just want to say a couple of words, because there's some BUILD uh, team members here who really threw themselves into it and who you may not know. Um, first of all, uh, Sherry Killens right here is a new BUILD team member. Um, she's been consulting with many organizations, including the Kellogg Foundation and Pearson Publishing, but also with BUILD, and now will be joining the BUILD staff as the director of uh, systems into alignment and integration. I can never remember which one goes first. We also have Kelly. Where is Colorado? Kelly Perez joined the build team yesterday. 
<laughs> so she's well versed and she's leading up our early childhood equity initiatives work. So we're thrilled to actually get to see a team member when it's their first week. That's great. Um, Karen Ponder, where are you? I haven't even seen you. Do you not hear yet? Okay. Um, Karen Ponder is also, you know, clearly not on the build staff, but part of the team and has been a big part of thinking this through. And Judy Wright Parker, I want to acknowledge right here from Maine, the beautiful state of Maine. Uh, she lives down the street from me, um, but we see each other in Chicago. She's really helped to think through this work. And Ann Mitchell right here. Louise Stoney, where are you? Somewhere in Florida, there, Louise Stoney, um, Miriam Calderon. And then I wanted to mention to you, uh, to Megan Robinson, who's at the back, she'll be tweeting, is that right? Um, it, and helping with the live stream. We had to do something we hate to do, which is say no to a number of states um, when we ran out of space. The room just couldn't fit more state teams. So we are live streaming the plenary sessions and Megan and C3 are helping us with that. But Megan also was a key part of organizing the meeting. And Dara, I know many of you have met her um, from other meetings, but uh, we couldn't possibly have a meeting without her. And then in absentia, Gary, uh, Jerry Cobb is in Paris, believe it or not, but usually she's the backbone of every meeting and she certainly was a key part of the planning and Ruth Tromka who helped a great deal in pulling it together. So I just wanted to mention a little bit about that team um, and then tell you a little bit more about yourselves. You are an optimistic group. Uh, <laughs> When we asked you if you thought that this Early Head Start Child Care Partnership opportunity could advance state early childhood systems, 96% of you said yes. Um, I, I was a little surprised. I was thinking the choice, it could, but not, not necessarily. I thought that was going to be a bigger group, but that was actually only 4.3% of you. Um, so I think that people do see the opportunity and are ready to jump on it. That's what we're counting on. Uh, you also were an optimistic group when on paper you ref reflect on your state. Um, we asked about your state's capacity to identify infants and toddlers with high needs and to identify um, under-resourced communities. And 48.5 of you thought your state had, you know, medium capacity to do that. And over a third of you thought that you had high capacity. Just 3% indicated that this was a serious problem. Um, but I think that we know that even identifying a problem is the beginning of the solution and maybe that's where we are, that we know that we have real data problems and real problems in terms of having the information we need to target resources um, perfectly and that people are on the road to making that happen. I think that's also something that's been changing over the past few years. You also were optimistic when we asked you about um, your ability across your state to identify programs that would be able to achieve the high quality um, early head start standards. And over half of you felt that you had, that your state had a medium ability and just under a third um, felt that you had high ability to identify such programs. Um, 40 percent of you uh, indicated that you feel like you have a high understanding of early Head Start standards. And 50% of you said that you had mapped your QRIS standards to your Head Start standards, done some kind of crosswalk. So that was, I think, pretty high um, and certainly a great next step. Sorry about that. Um, you also indicated we were trying to think about how are we and you and how together can we understand state roles. What is the role of the state in this kind of opportunity? And you all answered both early on the question about being able to advance systems that you did feel that this was an opportunity to do that. But when you looked at the state role, many of you saw many roles and they were overwhelmingly um, similar. Over 50% of you, actually 62% of you, thought that the state is a force to ensure statewide systems are leveraged. Um, you also felt that the state could act as a TA provider for local applicants 
and again, over 50% I um, indicated that the state has an important role in identifying areas of unmet need. So those were the three highest, uh, the roles that the largest numbers of you felt that the state had. But even um, other roles, like convener and coordinator of community-based applications, 47% of you felt that that was an important role for the state. And 30% of you said that your state is considering applying as a statewide grantee. Only 6% of you felt that the state had no role whatsoever. So you have state teams here today that are people inside and outside government focusing at the state level and the local level, I think it's a chance to really figure out what are the best roles for each of you. And even if you're not a team that has worked together over many years, some of you are and some of you aren't, it is a chance to figure out what are those roles and how we can um, take our next steps together. So next in this moment of welcome, that's Max when he was little on the left, learning how to read. Um, uh, next, I thought it would be great to have the, the co-inspirers uh, and leaders, um, the you know, voice of childcare and the voice of Head Start. I think symbolically it's very important that we recognize that this is a Head Start childcare partnership um, and that we need both. And so it is, um, I'm very pleased to be able to invite up uh, Vanessa Rich and Lynette Fraga, who are each going to speak. Who would like to speak first? They're going to hug first publicly. Um, do you want to go first, Vanessa? Uh, Vanessa is the Deputy Commissioner. Now, it's the Department of Support Services now. Is that right? Family and Support Services. I think of it as children, youth, and families, but OK. You're the boss. Um, but we also really invited her because of her leadership. Uh, she is the chair of the National Head Start Association. And so both an executive manager and someone with teaching experience from preschool on up under her belt has thought a lot about what it is we need to do for our youngest children. So Vanessa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm on behalf of the National Head Start Association and Mayor Rahm Emanuel, I want to welcome you to Chicago and to this wonderful event. Um, Chicago, as we say, is my kind of town, and we hope that while you're here, it will be your kind of town, too. Uh, I also wanted to thank the BUILD initiative and their funders for getting all of us together uh, for this important discussion, and especially at such short notice. Um, the fact that everybody got here and there were people lined up to get here speaks volumes about how important this is to the field and to all of us and what a historic time we are in. For those of us who have had an unrelenting focus on early childhood education for most of our <clears throat> professional careers, <laughs> some of them longer than others, this is awesome. It is awesome that people in every corner and community of this nation are talking about young children and their early years and how important it is. It is, it, it, it just makes me want to jump up and do the happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say something else for all of us too. This is something that we've hoped for for a long time. It's an opportunity that we can't afford to miss. It's an opportunity that we have to step up and seize. These early Head Start child care partnerships, just saying that together, early Head Start child care partnerships represent an opportunity for us to talk, for us to collaborate at that local level to look at what our needs are and to really have the conversation of finding where we can expand access of high quality early learning to all of our children, all of our babies. I'm so pleased that there are so many Head Start people here too. My Head Start family, that is another testament 
to what we mean and Head Start's commitment to making this work. We want to work with states to build that mixed delivery system. Models that include childcare, Head Start, private preschools, and public schools. By convening these diverse delivery systems, states will not only improve access to programs, but will also give parents a choice. The expertise of the entire early learning community has to be brought together in order to build a solid foundation for these things to happen. We have to have that for us to go forward again for our youngest children. As Head Start, we remain focused on serving the most vulnerable. And research backs us up in that. It has clearly demonstrated that the lowest income and the most vulnerable children benefit the most from high quality early care and education. We encourage our states to convene these conversations and undertake needs assessments with those local communities to identify concentrations of our highest need lowest income children, and to ensure that they too have access to high quality early care and education. We also encourage all of our states to consider innovative ways to booster the high quality neighborhood organizations that serve poor families, and to invest in the importance of parent engagement. Uh, since our earliest days, and some of us were there, uh, parent engagement has been a value for Head Start programs. It's been our foundation. In fact, we may have been the original whole family to generational model. Generations of parents have volunteered in classrooms, participated in policy councils, and been their children's first and best teacher. The successful implementation of these partnerships grants, these partnership grants, I have to remember that money goes along with the partnerships, <laughs> will be an important milestone, another step towards keeping our national commitment to provide a window of opportunity for our most vulnerable children and their families. Head Start appreciates that so many of you have joined in moving these grants forward and this conversation from just the drawing board into reality. We look forward to continuing to work with each and every one of you. We have to make the success. We are committed to it for our children and our dreams. Thank you. Well, that makes me want to do a happy dance now. Um, and so I'd like to also welcome Lynette Fraga. She's the Executive Director of Child Care Aware. I think many of you might remember her from zero to three as well, where she did many things, but one of them was the military family projects. And it's also particularly appropriate for Lynette to be here with us because she did, led the development of the Early Head Start Family Child Care Initiative. So we have a lot to learn from that as well. Lynette? So I'm bringing a glass of water up with me because we had our national conference just last week and um, I talked an awful lot. So here I am with another group of really amazing, enthusiastic people. As Susan was beginning and she was trying to get everybody um, looking to the front of the room, I thought, what a feat trying to get all of these enthusiastic, committed, excited um, folks um, to pay attention to uh, the front of the room is really tough. So um, congratulations for convening us. Um, I am Lynette Fraga, the Executive Director for Child Care Aware of America, and we are a national membership organization of child care resource and referral agencies across the country and other community partners that ensure that all families have access to quality, affordable child care. And to achieve our mission, we do that in many different ways across each of your states to increase the quality and availability of care, to offer comprehensive training to child care professionals, to undertake research and advocate for child care policies that improve the lives of children and families. So here all of us are today, an optimistic group, as Susan shared. The Early Head Start Child Care Partnerships create an unprecedented, an unprecedented opportunity 
for our nation to focus on the needs of vulnerable infants and toddlers within the context of communities, community-based child care. In addition to high quality early learning experiences, early Head Start programs provide high quality comprehensive services that benefit children, families, and providers. I met Vanessa, um, gosh, I don't know Vanessa, under a year ago um, with that smiling face and a level of enthusiasm and passion with she and Yasmina. And again, uh, the idea that what can come to fruition is such a strong partnership between Head Start and the child care community is uh, pretty tremendous for all of us, I think. Um, ensuring that children undergo health, developmental and behavioral screening, stronger safety and nutrition standards, increased training for providers and supportive parent engagement opportunities is what we're looking at um, by way of increasing the availability of quality child care settings to more vulnerable children and families. What we know, as what Vanessa shared from countless studies, is that the quality of infant and toddler care across the nation is challenged, particularly for the most vulnerable of our young children. Creating these child care partnerships is going to require a heavy lift, a heavy lift for all of us at the national level, at the state level, at the local community level. But we are optimistic. We're an optimistic crew. And for states to really align policies and investment and standards to ensure more than 100,000 children from birth through age three participate in high quality early learning programs is essential, is essential for our country. And so the goal of these grants is we understand it and we'll unpack even more over the next couple of days, I learning along with you, is to create new partnerships with childcare programs and early Head Start. We all know the definition of collaboration, sometimes an unnatural act between sometimes non-consenting adults um, that are um, involved. Um, is, this one is no exception. Sometimes it's going to be a challenge. All of us have experienced that. But at the end of the day, we all want the same outcomes. At our conference last week, we heard how eager the child care leaders of about 300 from across the country came together. And we're talking about the opportunity to create partnerships with Head Start. But we're not always clear about how to do so. That's our work. That's our work that we have ahead of us. As leaders in your state, you are well positioned to help pave the way toward productive partnerships by creating opportunities for child care to learn about Head Start, for Head Start to learn about child care, and for all of us to meet the needs of the vulnerable children and families that we care so much about. While the FOA is not out yet, we don't know how long the grant competition be, will be open. We do know that it will not be long enough for all of the relationships to be created, but it sure will be enough time for us to begin to establish them if we have not done so already. We know that relationships take time and commitment. So our local communities would benefit from us sharing for, with each other our access to materials, our resources, our MOUs, and other documents that reflect, that reflect the state context. As was mentioned earlier, this work has already begun years ago. Uh, we're just putting a huge magnifying glass on it and some resources to make it happen. The child care and, and, and Head Start leaders in this room and others that can, can simplify the key elements of child care information and provide information on how to build on this very solid foundation to meet performance standards. You are each in your position to set up your states for success and can help pave the way to many successful applications in your states. As I shared, Child Care Aware of America had its annual conference last week and the conversations were about everything that's on this agenda. How do we create these relations? Where do we fit in these relationships? What are our roles? How optimistic are we really? What is layering of funding? Um, and how do we really unpack that? As leaders in your states, you can help streamline and simplify this process to support layering effectively through your redetermination policies to sustain subsidy funding for eligible children in so many other ways. And I look forward to hearing from many of you about your ideas and innovative ways to support this. We are in such an exciting place as a field to be wrestling seriously with the challenges that are before us on how to improve the quality of early learning programs for infants, toddlers, and their families. While we have a lot of work in front of us, we are so fortunate to have the opportunity to do this work. It's amazing for me to come into this role a year and a half ago and to be in this place. 
Someone had mentioned um, at our conference last week that she's a state leader and she felt she had cheated because she sort of jumped into a role after standing on the shoulders of giants for, that have been working for this for many years. I feel the same way. Uh, it's a pretty tremendous opportunity and responsibility to be in the position that I am, and I so look forward to partnering with all of you. I just want to say thank you as well to BUILD and all of the other sponsors and supporters, individuals that were called out, individuals that aren't even in this room. And I'm working, looking forward to working and learning from you over the next two days. Thank you. Sherry doesn't want to be introduced because we're behind, so I'll do it really, really quickly. I just wanted to say uh, many of you know Sherry from her role in Massachusetts. She was the commissioner of the Department of Early Education and Care. I had met her before, but I got to know her during the Early Learning Challenge grant process, and here's someone who knows how to take advantage of an opportunity. While other people have their heads down and are just writing, uh, trying in the deadline to be able to write what it is that their state has done already. She was inventing and creating and trying to figure out new next steps that could be taken in Massachusetts, and it's really paid off into some incredible work. And Bill is very excited to have Sherry work with us. Um, she's someone who has systems thinking seemingly in her DNA. It just, uh, that is how she thinks. And so every opportunity is brought to a new level and given new potential. So we're very happy to have her. And a lot of the meeting, I'm just turning right over to you. So. Of course, I had already negotiated with Joan that I could steal five minutes, so it's really okay, but I was trying to make it up wherever I could. I am so excited to be here and see all of you. We are really positioned for partnership just by the fact that you're all here and you're gonna spend a good 48 hours thinking about the work. And I know many of you have already planned meetings when you get back home. How many states have done that already? Lots of states. Look at that, that's so exciting. So you believed in us and we believe in you and we're gonna give you stuff to take back home. Um, I wanna thank Susan um, because while I believe anything is possible, there are very few people who I hang out with who also believe anything is possible. And we make things happen at four in the morning and six in the morning and 11 at night and on Sunday morning. And so we should really thank Susan for all the hours she's put in to, to making this happen as well. As a previous child care administrator, Head Start Collab Director, and it's great to see you all, and commissioner in an early learning and development system, I know this opportunity is fraught with both risk and opportunity. And we really want you to be thinking about it in terms of the opportunity. And it's a little unfair. Head Start had a 25-year jump on CCDF. And we don't ever talk about that. Hopefully, Joan's going to mention that in a little bit. But we are moving CCDF forward. But Head Start, you really did have a little bit of a head start on where, on where you are. And so we look forward to building a partnership. But sometimes our language is different. Our methods are different. Our boss is different. How we're monitored is different. We want to take some risks to be able to move that forward. And BUILD is here with you now and will be there with you after, both during the application and post the application, to help you take those risks and recognize that opportunity. Um, Judy said in an early conversation when we were planning in a meeting, she said, you know, this is really a flashpoint. And so I'm excited about the application, but not so much. The more is for the move. We've had race to the top. That was more than it expected us to move. We've had longitudinal data systems grant. That was more than it expected us to move. We have the uh, early learning, um, the um, home visiting that was more and expected us to move. And so some think about this as a half a million dollars, but it's just more expecting us to move. And when you spend enough time with Joan, she's most proud, not of the 19 states that got the early learning race to the top, but of all the movement that happened across the country because of it. So I want you to think about that theme, that this more, this opportunity is about moving forward um, for all of our, our children. So my job is to remind you of the goals of the meeting. Um, we really want to help you move from a program vision to a perspective as a larger community vision. And what's the state role in making that happen? 
We want to align what's happening in Head Start and in child care, thinking about early learning standards, thinking about professional development, thinking about screening and formative assessment. And we want you to use this opportunity not for the half a million dollars, but for the large, for all of our children um, in our states. And we want to make sure that children have continuity across programs. Like, we're real excited that we had home visiting for babies and we now have early Head Start for babies, but they don't end at babies, right? So when they're three, how are we going to make sure that they go from Part C in the child care if that's the right move? Or how do they go from three to a preschool program if that's the right move? It doesn't do us much good to get this part really well and not be thinking about the continuum. And that's why states being involved and engaged is so important in our work. So we are going to be there with you so that you can make the move, but as you think about the risk and the opportunity, we really want you to think about it in context of all of our children. I also get to go over the packet. Like, we went crazy, and um, Judy did a really good job of putting together some resources. Um, when you get the electronic copy, you just click them, and you go right to them, and it's fabulous. Um, we fought about what we put in the packet, what we wouldn't put in the packet, but this is what's in the packet. There's a huge website. You should thank Megan and others for putting it together so you can go get additional information. But in this packet, hard copy, you've got a copy of the agenda. You've got the resource people. We put pictures so that you could find them, hold them accountable, work them 48 hours. Um, they're here for that purpose. We want you to know who they are. We've got the list of participants in the meeting. We've got a great piece that Jeff did. It'll be revised when the FOA comes out, but it starts to give you some hints. Um, federal government's not real creative, so a lot of what we think will be in the application, if you've seen other Early Head Start applications, probably going to be there but he'll update that. You also have the resource list that I mentioned. Again, when you get this electronically, it has um, hot buttons in it so you can go right to the resources. There's an activity that we're gonna do this afternoon which Deb will describe to you in a little bit. We're gonna have a great dinner preliminary where we have partnerships talk about what it took and what it meant and we thank folks for that. You get the definitions of the technical assistance workshops and you'll hear more about which ones you're assigned to and, and where to go. You also have a piece that was done by zero to three on building partnerships between early Head Start grantees and child care, but don't let it limit your thinking. Think big and come up with your own ideas. And then we have this piece that I um, think is pretty great, came out from ACF, that's a side-by-side -side comparison of Head Start and the child care block grant. It's a good piece, but it won't have your state language. And so part of your challenge is saying, well, what's going on in my state in terms of CCD? And then the third column says, where do we want to move as a state? Finally, we've given you a summary sheet, and on your table there's a description piece that didn't make the packet, but a summary of the high poverty census tracts and children. You will get an email when you get home that tells you the exact census tracts, the top 15% census tracts in your state. Um, too much to, to copy and probably more useful to you as an email. But for now, we've given you the top census tracts um, based on poverty, and we thank Charlie and his team for that. Let me just quickly run through the agenda, okay? Okay, quickly run through the agenda so you know how we're gonna put all this together. Um, so we're done with the welcome as soon as I sit down. And then uh, Joan's going to come up and inspire us and hold us all accountable, as she always does. And then we're going to have a great panel where Hannah and Yvette and Yasmina are going to talk to us about what are the programs, what are the requirements around CCDF and Head Start. And then we're going to have an exchange about the similarities and discipline differences. You need to play. Think of your questions because this will be an exchange where we want to have a conversation and you ask questions about similarities and differences. I am going to give you a 15 minute break. It's not written here. But we're going to participate and then give you a chance to at least stand up for a minute. Then Jeff's going to come up and talk about the nuts and bolts of the application based on what we know already and real excited about that. He's really scrubbed it. He's worked on others. Then you're going to work in teams and work on your ideal partnership, get rid of your boundaries and think, what would it be? And Deb's going to lead you through that. And then you're going to get a 45-minute break before a great dinner. 
um, and you'll come back together for dinner, and we'll have this panel on the partnerships. It seems like I've already mentioned, maybe I mentioned it in the comments. And then we're done at 8.30. And if, depending on where you're from, if you're from California, it's 6.30. If you're from the East Coast, it's only 7.30, so feel good about that. In the morning at 7.30, it's really 8.30 if you're in the East Coast. 9.30, see, it's even later. Okay, so to, just think about where you're from, share a little energy across the room. Um, in the morning, it'll either be really, really early or a little bit late. Um, we're going to get together at breakfast and roll a like table. So Head Start Collab Directors, CCDF Administrators, and we want you to generate what are your questions you want to make sure you get answered in the meeting. Um, so that's important to come and participate. Uh, we'll recap today. And then the TA sessions start, and I won't go through all of those. You all gave us a lot of information to figure that out. And you'll get two rounds of the TA sessions. We're asking you to move in teams because we want you to have team conversation and team discoveries. Uh, you get a box lunch tomorrow. And then we're going to have a great panel with Ann and Janice and Miriam really talking about financing innovation. You know, what is this layered, blended, braided funding? You know, what can we do now and what are some innovative ideas? And then you get your final team time to really make some commitments about what am I going to do when I go back home? What are some agreements we need? We know you're not everybody in your state, so who do I need to talk to when I get back home to really move this forward on multiple levels, at the state level, in terms of your early Head Start, child care partnership application, and just in getting your work done. We'll have closing thoughts at 2.30, and everybody can be out by 3. Plan? Thank you so much. We're really looking forward to it. The meeting will be all we put into it.